Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. This is the Gift Poncho. This is designed by D. Near for Karen Yarns and uh, this is really quite awesome and it's a really simple idea. It's a one piece unit and then we're gonna top it off with these beautiful scallops at the end. Couple of things that you should know right off the top. She's wearing this backwards in comparison to the, the actual schematic that we're gonna be using. So in actual fact, the schematic says that the point is actually at the back. But the nice thing about it is that it still looks great, right? So one side of it comes straight across and the other side juts down. So however you wanna wear it is your business and you can decide that for yourself. This is sized all the way for extra small to small, medium, and large to extra large uh, for this. It's actually pretty easy. It's using Karen Simply Soft yarns. It's actually using two yarns at one time. I decided to use a Karen Simply Soft ombre and I mixed it with Karen Simply Soft tweeds and together it gave it a more of a natural but value oriented uh, looking yarn. So what we're going to be doing today is that I'm gonna get you started for all sizes and then we're gonna be doing the scalloping edge together which will also match all sizes. Uh, I will be only doing the small size on camera with you but then I will be telling you the information that you need to know for the other sizes. So without further ado, let's grab our six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook. You're using two strands at one time. Takes a total of six balls but if you're using the ombre, um, I recommend that you have to get an extra one or two balls because the ombre is a little bit thinner. Uh, uh, sorry, the ball is a little bit smaller than the original Karen Simply Soft. So you have to keep that in mind. So let's uh, take a look and let's get ourselves started on this project and let's begin. So with any particular tutorial you expect me to be totally transparent and honest which I'm okay with. So I want to tell you this pattern is written in a really kind of strange way and I don't think it's the designer. I think that whoever did the editing of this has the particular pattern out of order. So what we're going to have is that you have the poncho cha chaining loosely of 126 for a small to small 154 to medium and then large to extra large is 169. This should be up here. Okay and then you continue down just like you see here. So it happens I'm not even, gonna, I, <laughs> I don't even have a good excuse. So um, when you're paying attention to this jump down here and then we're gonna jump back up and we're gonna get this done together, right? If this is the biggest problem that you have today you're having a super super great day. So let's start off with our beginning chain and then we're gonna get our foundation row started and then it's just a matter of repeating two rows in order to get to the size that you need. So let's do that first. So what you're going to do is put two strands into your hand and they're gonna be working together as one unit and what the, the on does change color throughout. I'm not gonna do the whole sample with you on camera because I've already done it but I'm just gonna explain it to you, show you how to do the stitch work and then you're going, I'll do the whole scallop with you on camera for sure. So we're gonna start off with a slip knot, leave an extra long tail so that you can use a tapestry needle at the end to weave those in. So if you're doing the small the and extra small to small you need to chain a certain amount. 136 is your number. If it's medium, 154 and if it's large to extra large it's 169. So just keeping them together with your six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook just chain the number that you want. Okay, so for myself I'm just gonna do a smaller uh, swatch with you here on camera and you're going to chain all the way down to the size that you want. Do it nice loose chain. It's gonna probably be loose for you anyway. It was for me. <laughs> I won't get into that and uh, you're just going to chain the number that you need and then meet me back here in just a moment. So put me on pause and we'll begin row number one together. So I've already lied to you. Row number one doesn't exist yet. We're doing the foundation row. We're gonna get ourselves started. So here we go. Um, you know, again, if this is the hardest day, a part of your day, it's a great day. So we're gonna do four chain from the hook. So count it back. So one, two, three, and you go to the fourth and go to the back hump of the stitch and I want you to do that because it'll look better in the end. So you're just going to double crochet. So that is counting as two double crochets on the end. You're going to chain one just like you see here and then skip one chain and then do two double crochets in a row and you're gonna do that all the way down your chain. And if your counts are right you will end up with two double crochets in a row at the very end but we'll get there in a moment. So two double crochets in a row. Then you chain one again, skip one and then two double crochets in a row. Please do that all the way down and uh, I will see you at the end of your chain. So put me on pause now. I'm coming all the way to the end of my chain. I didn't count my stitches before I started so um, I may not end up with the right number of chains but you will for sure. So chaining one and the last two stitches are two, uh, one double crochet each in the last two stitches. So I have one stitch actually technically left on my chain. I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna 
do that. So if that happens to you and you're new, what you can just do is just either reef on it real tight or you can just undo this knot. So you can just go backwards and uh, Jeannie does this all the time where she's not sure and her stitch counts right away. So she'll chain extra and then at the end if you just pull out that beginning chain like that. Look perfect. <laughs> so let's begin now officially row number one and then two and then we're gonna be repeating one and two until you get to a certain dimension. So let's do that next. So we're going to begin row number one. So row number one is gonna be done every other row and once you get onto this pattern it gets really easy to remember it too. You're gonna chain four which counts as a double crochet and chain one. So one, two, three. There's your first double crochet, chain one which is the fourth one is your chain one space. You're gonna come to your next chain one space here and you're going to put in two double crochets. It refers to them as a cluster in this particular pattern. So two double crochets right into that space itself. Then chain one and then move to the next chain one space and put in two double crochet. So guess what you're doing all the way down? Same thing, so chain one and then two double crochets in the next space. So maybe at the end of your row, put me on pause now and I'll show you how to finish this row. Eventually you're gonna get to the end so you're just gonna go to the chain one space, the last one here and put in your two and then to finish off you're going to do a chain one and then right in the turning chain itself you're going to put in a double crochet. Don't go into a gapping space cause you'll ruin it. Go right into a chain space area and double crochet. So what you have here is that the one below has two double crochets right in the end. This one has only one. So that's, it's gonna be opposite to each one. So row number two, you're gonna do this each and every time. You're going to chain up three and in the first space that you have, you're only gonna put one double crochet and then guess what you're doing all the way down. You're gonna chain one and go to the next space and two double crochet and you're gonna do that all the way down. So rows one and two is simply like a granny square but without going around in a circle and you're just putting in two double crochets in each space followed by a chain one after it. And then eventually you'll get to the other side. So you need to keep going back and forth on your project for a set amount of dimensions. So for the small size that I'm doing it's only 18 inches, for the medium it's 20 inches and for the large extra large it's 22 inches and it's the height so it's from the space all the way to the top. So that's how you're gonna get that information. So as you come out to the end, you're gonna chain one. So you're gonna come to the final chain one space and only put one in there and then put one double crochet in the turning chain. And that keeps it looking balanced. Do you see that? So turning your work, go back to doing row number one. So row number one, you're going to chain four. So one, two, three, four counts as a double crochet slash chain one. Come to the next chain one space and put in two double crochets and then begin what you already know all the way down. So this was repeating of row number one. So then after you get row number one, you're going to do what you did with row number two and that's all you just need to do. So what I need you to do is that I need you to go back and forth until you get to the certain height. Okay, so it's gonna be from this edge all the way to the top. It's either 18 inches, 20 inches or 22 and then when I'll come back I'll have that done for you and then we'll start, to, we'll put it together and then we'll do the bottom scalloping. So in the diagram we have this folding that we have. So we have a flat unit like this and now we're gonna fold it so that it comes down and then we're going to be looking at the back seam of this when we go to start. But let's uh, get this folded in a certain way. So here is the, the neck area and etc. So let's fold this in a way. Now you're going to notice that the seam line here is just a little bit off. We're not gonna worry about that right now. We are going to uh, be worrying about that later and you'll see how that will work out. So don't, uh, don't uh, <laughs> get any concern right now. So let's uh, fold this project in a way that it looks like that. So let's begin the special fold. So what you see in the photograph is that one edge is down. So I'm gonna use the edge that has the strand is gonna be down and I am going to just push up and now this edge here is going to match it. Okay, so you just match it like this. So what we're going to do is that we're going to evenly space our whip stitching along this edge. To do that just put the strands back into the tapestry needle and I want you just to whip stitch yourself around. 
So just going, so here's where it starts and you're just gonna come to the opposite side and go through and then back to where it starts. And now it's gonna come up over top of each other creating a whip stitch. And all you're just going to do is that match pretty close almost the stitch work to each other on the opposite sides of each other. And then once you get that done just advance and keep on going. Now what I would recommend is going into a chain. Don't go into a space when you have spaces involved on the one side of this project. So just continually advance down the edge and then I'll meet you at the opposite side and we'll fasten off together. So I'm coming up to the very end of the row here and I've evenly spaced it so it doesn't look like it's buckling. It's still sitting flat. It's beautiful. And we're gonna come right up to the top. So I just got one more on this side. So when you go to finish off, just put it through as in to knot it like that. And then I want you to weave in the ends. So just coming in and I would go to the back side of the project for this is that you're just gonna come to the back side. So just move the needle to the back and just weave it in and out of the stitch work a total of three times. It's gonna be nice and tight. Unfortunately this hook's a little bit or the needle that I'm using is a little bit big for this. So it gets a little tight. So I go through once. I come back through a slightly different path for the second time and finally the third time back. So there you go. So now you can trim it and now you're ready for your scalloping edge. That is awesome and it is really kind of cool. So we're going to be folding this in a certain way and uh, we'll be covering that in the next section. So let's begin to do the neck edging. We'll do that first before we're gonna do the scallops on this. So just create a slip knot to begin and what I want you to do is that I want you just to insert it. So see where it's pointing down? That's where I want you to start and I want you to just insert in and we're going to just simply just attach it with a slip stitch, chain one and single crochet back into that same spot. So you're just gonna go into every stitch that you have going around. If it's chain one space, just fill it in with a single crochet and follow it all the way around and coming back to where you are now. So please do that all the way around. I'll see you at the end. Do not fasten off. We're not quite done yet. So I'm coming up to the end of this and I'm going to join it with the first single crochet in just a moment. So what we're going to do is that we're gonna do a reverse single crochet all the way back to where we come. So it's called, it's called a crab stitch as well but it's also known as a reverse single crochet where you crochet kind of backwards. So you're just gonna come to the last one here and see how I joined into the uh, this is the turning chain so that's got to be one there too and I'm just going to join now to the first single crochet. So round number two, the final round and then you're gonna fasten off so just join it is a reverse single crochet. So you're gonna chain up one, go in the same one, pull through and then pull through two. But instead of advancing forward you want to go backwards. So you're gonna come to the stitch right before it and then just pull through and then pull through two. Okay, and now come to the one before it, in, pull through, and then pull through two. And you're gonna do this all the way around. This is called reverse single crochet and it changes the edging to be more of a textured look and more of a finished look as well. So you can see how it does this instead of being so flat. So please do a reverse single crochet all the way around and then we're gonna fasten off and then begin the scalloping next. So I'm coming all the way back around to where I had started still doing my reverse single crochet. So if you do it right, you can really do a good job in hiding this in. So you're gonna come to your last one and then you're just going to finish off here. So you wanna leave it at this point, leave an extra long tail but you're going to need a darning needle or a tapestry needle to be able to finish this off. So just pull through the loop. So you see it's not kind of matching this section here. So what I want you to do is that with your tapestry needle just feed this on and I want you to go in the direction continuing. So just sneak it under the first reverse single crochet that you had and staying towards the back side so the inside and just pull through. And if you pull through enough it will look like it's finished. Isn't that neat? So you're just going to then turn it around 
and then just go back in the other direction. Stay on the inside of the project. I really don't like this needle. I don't even know where I got it from but it's not number one on my list. But I don't know where my other one went. So I'm just gonna pull through. So once, so I already went through once. This is twice and now through a slightly different path three times. So I can now just safely just trim it down to the project, get rid of that and then we're gonna move on to our scalloping next. So that is your edge for the top and let's begin to work on the scalloping. So we're now about to start the final edge that we have and so what's gonna happen is that see this uh, X here? This is approximately where we're going to start and we're gonna come down and then back up and then over and then back around. Now here's the thing. See this dotted line? This is the short edge. Because it's a short edge we're gonna be working along the side of the rows. So before you hit the corner on all sizes you have to put in five single crochets equally spaced and then we hit the corner of single crochet, chain one, single crochet. Now this side and this side and just down to this dotted line is the side of the project. So you can just match the stitches that you see. But when you get back to here you have to equally space either 26 for the small or 29 stitches for the medium and large extra large is 33 stitches. This whole scalloping works based on, based on mathematics. So that's what we're gonna be aiming for today. So at this point we have the sewn, we have the neck done and now let's begin the scalloping together. So at the peak at the back this is the only point so you can't miss it. You're going to start off and you're going to create your first section down here. So it's about two inches in so um, my thumb section is one and two. It's about here and you're just going to apply five single crochets bef before the point. So the, the fifth one will be the point itself. So you're just gonna attach and just chain one and then single crochet back into that same spot. So this is gonna be one and then equally space it. The next one will be two, three, and then four. And then the point will be a single crochet. So we're right into the point itself. Make sure you get <laughs> adequate number of uh, stitches here. So it's gonna be single crochet, chain one and single crochet. And now you've officially turned the corner. So this is the normal side that we had been working with and all I'm just going to ask you to do is just I need you to single crochet into each of the stitch. Now this here in the corner that is that first double crochet that you had. So you're just gonna advance to the next one and you were going to single crochet in that one and then I would maintain the stitch work as you as you know it. Okay so um, for example I am just doing a single crochet in the double crochet. I'm not sure why I'm struggling but I am. <laughs> there you go. So then I would go into the chain one space for the next one and then you have your two double crochets so go into those and follow this all the way around until you get to this side here again where you're working down the side and I'll meet you back there in just a moment. So just keep on following. So I'm coming up all the way around. I'm really kind of sorry about that we have this uh, variegated yarn. It's always harder to teach a tutorial so I'm hoping that you're not, it's not a deal breaker for you. I'm sure by now people in the comments are already saying something but um, it is what it is and it's kind of the reality. I wanna show you that it can be done with the real stuff. So as we come around the last section as we come around is the sides. So we have to squeeze in a total of 26 stitches for the uh, small and then the medium is 29 stitches and 33 stitches for the large. Now you only go to the uh, to where the five starts. It may take you a couple tries in order to do this. So there's no magic formula. You just have to squeeze it in. So I just gonna go one and then just keep on going. So I would recommend staying within the chain work. So this is two and three and go all the way to the number uh, that you need in order to do that. I can't do that here on camera because I'm gonna lose count. So I'll do that with you. Uh, I'll, I'll meet you at the end of this. So I've now got my 26 in there. It took me two tries to equally space it as much as I could and then I'm going to slip stitch to the first one. So this is the foundation row really for the fans and now we're gonna begin row number one. So let's do that next. So let's begin row number one or round number one of 
the fan area. You're gonna chain one and technically we would go into the same one that you're starting with but you're not going to. You're gonna come to the next one and it says to single crochet in the next three. So skipping that first one and go in the first three. So one, two, and three. Just like that. It says chain one, skip one and then in the very corner one it says to apply five double crochets. So, so skipping one and put in five there. So one, two, three, four, and five. Like that. So once your five is in there you're going to chain one and you're gonna skip one single crochet. So skip the next one and single crochet in the next seven. So let's do that. So just single crochet in the next seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So now you're gonna chain one skip one and in the second one over it says to work five double crochets into that one. So it's another fan. So skipping the next one you've already chained one and you're putting in another five. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. So watch the repeat pattern. So the repeat pattern is kind of starting now. So you're gonna chain one after you've done that and you're gonna skip the next one and come into the next one after it and do seven in a row. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, chain one, skip one, and then five double crochets into the next. So please repeat the same counts all the way around and I will see you at the end of this round and this is good to go. So as I come back around then I'm just going to fill in my last section here so I have my five double crochets that make up the final scallop or the final fan. I was doing scallop working on another tutorial earlier this week so I'm kind of like getting the two names all messed up. So I got my five chain one and Remember how we started off with three uh, single crochets before here so that means that there's four left as we finish off. If you don't have those right counts fake it. Like seriously you don't wanna frog anything at this point. Just if you fake it just uh, <laughs> enjoy it all the, or the, all the more. So I'm just gonna slip stitch it to the first so you have these scallops now or these uh, fans now all the way around and let's begin to round number two. So let's begin row number two. And it's actually pretty easy. Just gotta stick with it. So here we go. We're gonna chain up one and it says to skip the first single crochet which is the one that we're on and we're going to single crochet in the next. Just like that. So it says to chain two and then we're going to skip the next uh, single crochet and what we need to do then is to apply two double crochets into each one of the five fans. Okay so let's just do that. So let's just count those up together. So one and two into the first uh, double crochet the fan and let's just do the second one. Actually I went into a space. I just wanna fix that. If you see something wrong right away it's better to fix it. So let's get right into that first double crochet for two. That looks a lot better. And this is the point anyway which is people's eyes go right to it. So there's gonna be two double crochets in each one of the fans and so that's gonna happen for every fan all the way around. So you're seeing it's gonna double its size. So there will be a total of five groups of two double crochets going on each fan. Okay so one, two, three, four, five. Now it says to once we get that done is that we are going to chain two and what we want to do is that there's seven single crochets that are spanning this. You're going to skip the first chain one space and the first single crochets, the first two and you're going to single crochet in the next three. So one, two, and three. 
and that leaves you two empty single crochets and a chain one space. So you're gonna chain two and then five or sorry um, you're going to play it in two double crochets in each one of the five fans that are, are existing. And now you're gonna do this same thing all the way around. One thing I do like about this design which I wasn't sure of from the very beginning is that I like how the designer has just doing the point right off the bat. So you simply can go all the way around without having to fuss too much and really the hard work is done right at the very beginning. So there's gonna be two double crochets in each one of the fans so there will be five groups of two. And let's review how to move on. So you're gonna chain two, skip the chain one space, skip the first single crochets, the two of those and single crochet in the next three. So one, two, three. Then chain two, skip the next two and then just immediately two double crochets in each one of the fans again. So please do that same idea going all the way around for row number two. So I just finished the last fan skipping the chain one space, skipping the first two single crochets and I'm gonna single crochet in the final two. So one and two because when we started we only started with one. So you're just gonna slip stitch and we're now going to begin the final round, round number three. So let's begin the final round. We're going to chain up three. So one, two, three and then we're going to begin. So you're gonna come immediately to the fan, the first one and the first one will have two double crochets in it. So one and two and then the next one is gonna have one double crochet in by itself. Okay, so let's do that and then you keep on repeating that all through the fan. So the next one is gonna have two into the same one. So one and two and then the next one is one by itself. And then there's two into the next one. So you're really growing the fans this time and then one into the next one. Two into the next one and one into the next one, two into the next one and then finally one by itself. So that whole fan has just been done. So now you're going to chain three, so one, two, three and come to the middle single crochet of the three and just single crochet there and then begin this all over again. So chain three and coming into the first one you're going to place in two double crochet and then the next one is one by itself. Do you get that? Do you understand that? So you just gotta keep on growing these fans out and when you get them done just chain three, single crochet into the middle one and then um, chain three and then start the next fan. So please do that all the way around for round number three. So I've come all the way back around just as a mental note I actually used five balls of the Karen Simply Soft Ombre for this one here and I actually <laughs> This is all I had to do for the fifth ball so it is what it is and uh, that's something that you should just keep in mind. Once you finish the final fan you're going to chain three and then just slip stitch it to the first one that you had and then what we want to do is just keep an extra long tail here and we are going to throw that into a tapestry needle to hide. So just pull it through and then grab up your tapestry needle. So keeping both in the same one in the same needle at the same time and I want you to concentrate what's on the back. So see how it's kind of leaning up towards you. So this is the good side of the project. So just coming back and because this is uh, changing colors um, it's, it'd, be, it'd be nicer to hide it here but it doesn't match the color. So I want to go back in the direction from which I just came in the same color way and stay towards the back side. So once I get it through once, so once Go back through a different path second time and back through a different path third time. I really need to, <laughs> I think it's my third time complaining about this uh, particular needle. So what we have now at this point is that you're just going to trim your work and then that's it for today. Have a great day until next time it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd. So is my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.